we started at Corriton, walked up as far as Tonguinlice. We went up to Taswell, to Glen Alain, and up to Nangaro. And then from Nangaro, looked at the hints and whispers that were left. Here we are back at Rita Bellin, at uh, where we left last time. But I mentioned something as I finished off the video before. I just want to show you because it has a little bit of a bearing on something we're going to be seeing in a little while. This is True Forest Tin Plate Works. Um, I'm putting this through a fence, it's a metal fence to try and get pictures of because it's now well fenced off. There's good reason for it as well. You see, uh, one of the inhabitants of the Tin Plate Works after they closed used a lot of nasty chemicals and it's now full of stuff which you really don't want to be near, including apparently arsenic. Tin plate making needs water and the river taps over there. So therefore they needed to get water from there into the tin plate works. And they built a weir and off that weir they took a mill race or elite. And you can see it on the map here. So when the Cardiff Railway built their embankment, they needed to get the leet underneath it and hence they built a tunnel. And that tunnel carried the leet underneath the railway. When I look down into the uh, trees here, you can actually see it. You can see it there through the trees. And I have been down there to have a look, however, Having wandered into it a little way, I'm pretty sure there's someone in there. Um, can certainly hear a lot of movement and noises, and so I don't want to disturb them, I'm not going to go in any further. I'm going to take these photos, uh, take this night video, and taking this video of the tunnel. It is still there, I thought it was blocked off, but it's not, it still goes right the way through into the back end of the tin plate works. So, that's the last real structure on the line until we get to where they needed to connect the two up. So I'm going to wander up a bit further and go and find that. You wouldn't believe where I'm standing and looking at this, where I'm actually at, but this was the embankment of that railway. And if I come round here and just through this gap, what you will see there is the Taff Vale lines. That's how close it all came. This was the end of the line, quite literally, of the Cardiff Railway. And the gap between here and those lines was what eluded them. So what happened? What stopped them from connecting this bit here to that bit there? What took place? Well, when the bill came out in 1898 that allowed the Cardiff Railway to build, Tuff Vale did a very crafty thing. They bought a strip of land. In fact, it was this strip of land along here that they bought. What they said they were going to do was build sidings. Because in 1902, the Cardiff Railway submitted to the Taff Vale their plans to connect their line to the Taff Vale lines. And the Taff Vale went, oh, no, 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 you're not doing that. And it then went through a process that if I did every single step, we'd be here for two hours. You'll be pleased to know I'm not going to do that. But effectively, the Taffel had four lines, as you can see on this map here. Two were freight, two were mixed. And they made the point that the Cardiff Railway had the authority to connect to their freight lines, but not to go onto their mixed lines and to do so would go out of the bounds that they had submitted in the act. So it went to court. That didn't have to work. They went to mediation. That didn't work. And so the Cardiff Railway went back to Parliament for another act. So in 1906, they put a new act through. Again, the Taff Vale objected and the Barry Railway objected as well because it said it would hold up their trains coming off the Taff Vale lines. In 1907, they completed this embankment that I'm standing on and everything was ready, but in 1908, again, they objected and said that, um, uh, you know, they could use the original plan, even though it had been declared null and void. And even in 1908, after the arbitration ruled in favour of the Cardiff Railway, the Taff Vale still objected, but they started talking mergers. 
1907, 1908, the merger talks happened. And on the 15th of May in 1908, as I said, a temporary bridge was put in to connect the two up. It was a wooden bridge and it stretched from the end of the embankment here, right across there, and hooked up the Taff Vale lines. The first ceremonial train passed over and everything seemed set for a rosy future. Except, as I've already said, the Barry docks and the Newport docks objected to the merger bills. And all of a sudden, we're back to square one. In the meantime, the Cardiff Railway thought we better be doing something with these lines and they purchased some rail cars. They were built by uh, Gloucester Carriage and Wagon Works and became two and three in the fleet with the trailers becoming four and five. They were delivered in 1911 and after some trial trips went into service on the 1st of March. This image shows one of the rail cars on its own, possibly on a test. The gentleman with the boater actually is the Marquis of Butte and it had paused at Reed of Felon. It's unusual to see these on their own, they usually ran with their trailers, hence why this was very possibly a test run. However, what's fascinating is this image. I've seen it a couple of times, but it's a view across the valley with the line heading towards Rita Vellum Viaduct on the right hand side. But there, just before it, is a single rail car. It could be the same run, and it could be they were testing the viaduct. And even though history says only one train officially travelled over it, it could have been possible that this rail car with the Marquis of Butte on it actually had a quick trip over it. Now, when I look at the track maps, you can see there are uh, points here, a crossover, and it may have been they were using that. But we don't know. It'd be nice to think that happened. The rail cars had seating for 64 passengers and there was another 80 in the trailer, um, a combination of first and third class seats. Um, there wasn't a lot of traffic and most of the larger railways already moved away from rail cars. And so when it came to their refurbishment and servicing in 1919, they were converted into trailer cars and uh, locomotives were used uh, on an auto train basis. There was some freight run, but it's fair to say not a lot. Meanwhile, back to the law courts. 1913, Cardiff Railway said to the Taff Vale, look, we'll propose this modest uh, hookup of our line to yours. Nope. Um, they tried in 1914 to lease this parcel of land behind me um, so that they could connect. Nope. In 1917, the Cardiff Railway the Taffvale Railway and the Rumney Railway decided that working together is probably better than having all these battles. And they appointed somebody to be their superintendent of all three lines. His name was Ernest Prosser. Now you may have come across him in one or two videos I've done previously. Uh, the Abba Valley, for example, I mentioned. Uh, he was at that time the chief superintendent of the Rumney Railway. And also Kevin on Park, which he built for his son and is now owned by the council. However, the writing was on the wall and in 1921, the Railways Act merged all three lines together and put them under the Great Western Railway. The decision as to whether or not the Cardiff Rail line and the Taff Vale lines would be connected was now down to Paddington. No, not that Paddington. Sorry, couldn't resist. It was down to the GW our headquarters at Paddington and they decided no. And so on the 16th of September 1925, the line from here where I'm standing, right down to Reed of Ellen, across the viaduct, was taken out of use, 27 years after the bill was passed. The rest, as I say, is history. The passenger stations north of Corriton taken out of service in 1931 and the line north of Nangarrow taken out of service in 1940. In 1952, the line at Taft's Well was built to join the Cardiff Railway and the point from Glenelyn Station all the way down to Corriton was completely taken out of use and built over. And that's it. That's the history of the Cardiff Railway. Except there's one more relic that I really do need to show you before I close this off. We're down here in Cardiff Bay. And there's a reason we're down here. This was the entrance to West Butte Dock. Would have come under there and underneath that bridge. But the Cardiff Railway Company wanted 
a headquarters and in 1879 they decided to build themselves one and well it's the Cardiff Railway Company isn't it so they're going to do it in style. This is Pierhead. It was built in 1879, Franco-Gothic Renaissance start. And well, it's fair to say they went overboard when it came to the decorations. You got hexagonal chimneys. You've got friezes. You've got toppings on on the clock at the top of the tower. The clock actually uh, is ornamental. It's electric. Uh, it was sold off in 1973 by the then owners, believe it or not, British Rail. And by some circuitous route, it actually ended back in Cardiff and is on display at the bottom end of St Mary Street in this, uh, in this glass case. And here on the outside is the coat of arms. The Cardiff Railway Cardiff Docks coat of arms featuring locomotive and a sail steamboat. Uh, representing the two elements that were supposed to make up what should have been a highly successful company. Today the pier head is owned by the Welsh Government, uh, part of the Senate, and is actually an exhibition centre with the main Parliament Senate building being next door. It's quite an iconic building to be standing in front of to finish this series, from Redevelen to Cardiff Bay, uh, standing down here on a warm summer's evening well, a warm and windy summer's evening, it's fair to say. It's been great fun making this series of video, and I want to thank everybody who's uh, sent in images, photos, and information. Um, I'm going to be doing a mop-up video with some photos that have come in, uh, which have arrived kind of like after the videos that they would have featured in. Uh, but for the main body of the work, uh, from Corriton up to Rita Vellan and all points in between, um, that's the end of this series on the Cardiff Railway. However, please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification button. Uh, I'll be out doing a lot more soon. And until next time. <laughs>